Vampires, Ghosts, and Aliens. Laser Brain Comics is back with a Halloween special anthology. Yes, we know it's March, but you know what? We caught up to it, and we're glad we did. So stay tuned for our review of Laser Brain Comics Halloween special. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of the Laser Brain Comics Halloween special by Ryan L. Higgins. On, available now on Kickstarter, in which we get 10 tales of terrifying trauma to tickle your funny bone. Try saying that five times fast. Oi! <laughs> Great. Uh, but before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't, don't forget to hit that bell for notification and stay tuned to the end for the rating and our final score. So let's talk about the credits. This is an anthology, so you're going to get 10 short stories. So Ryan Higgins, Ryan L. Higgins, who is the creator of this particular comic, and the owner of the Kickstarter campaign is the writer on each and every one of these stories, but he brings in a gaggle of, of writers to associate with each one of the shorts. So the collection is, think of it as a portfolio of different art styles, but with the same writer for each. But let's talk about who we got. So Ryan L. Higgins obviously is the writer and he also does some coloring and an assortment of other uh, artistic duties on this particular anthology. Uh, I'm gonna rattle off some of the creators here. We have Craig Rousseau, Rich Woodall, Scott Brian Woods, Jeff Lorenz, Mike Hardigan, Natalia Avalar, Jim Lawson, and also we have another Higgins on the crew, uh, Jack Higgins who's helping out with some of the coloring. And this is, from a rating and cost perspective, this is a Kickstarter, so the general price is $5, and it, it was delivered last October. That's a, the estimated delivery schedule. Uh, the tone of this book, generally speaking, is all ages. So even though it's a horror comic, it's more like, not. it's a little bit more mature than it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown kind of Halloween. It, it's a little bit more than that, kind of like in the Cracked Magazine, Mad Magazine realm of, horror mixed with humor there's no adult language there's no gore uh, so this is pretty much an all ages kind of anthology we're going to go through each of the stories very quickly just give you a quick one or two sentence on what they do and what the, what it's about uh, and where they hit and where they don't hit now just to kind of give, give you a little bit of a primer here each one of the stories isn't necessarily a complete story some of them are more like vignettes or skits if you will it's that kind of storytelling but each one of them to kind of tap, tackle a, a different type of Halloween subject. Uh, and so, generally speaking, if you want to give this to kids, it's safe to do, and you're going to have a good time. But it's not, these aren't very these aren't feature length stories. They're more like little skits, like you would find in a play or some or some kind of you know anthology. What, what comes to mind is like SETV or SNL, but with much better writing and humor. Generally speaking. Okay, so let's talk about the major skits. There is a, a wraparound called The Space Between Stories, but that's really just an introduction. It, it doesn't provide any connective tissue to the individual uh, stories in this anthology, but th there is a, a little bit of a primer there to get you started. So let's talk about, let's see, it's a teenage vampire wasteland. In this story, you have a virus, or I would say a virus, a, a, a vaccine, that's meant to combat an assortment of viruses. Unfortunately, the vaccine has the unintended effect of turning teenagers into vampires, at least for a select group. And then eventually that turns into a vampire apocalypse. The uh, two boys who are teenagers in a small town uh, decide to just kind of dip in and out and just enjoy life being vampires. Uh, unfortunately, the, a third vampire teenager that they're used to being with, a guy by the name of Ian, who happens to be a jerk, <laughs> takes things a little bit too far. And then the apocalypse uh, winds up wiping out all the humans, which is the blood supply. And that makes Ian take some drastic steps, which leads to a very strange uh, outcome for Ian, and which gets even stranger when the get some unexpected, I should say, intergalactic visitors come to town. Not a bad story. Okay, weird, interesting twist at the end. Kind of comes out of nowhere, nowhere but it uh, works out. Uh, let's see, the new guy in this particular short uh, we have an, a group of assembly workers that work at a robotics factory. Uh, the manager works with the executive the owners of the factory to create, to bring in some new workers who happen to be robots themselves. And things are going along fine until the robot uh, proficiency gets a little bit out of hand, spawning a, a new era of peace and prosperity. 
which all of a sudden gets upended when we turn into when we uh, <laughs> develop an intergalactic war between rival corporations. The premise is good. The ideas are good. The twist at the end with the intergalactic war sort of comes out of nowhere at the last minute. Uh, and so that kind of throws it off a little bit. I, Ryan doesn't infuse too much uh, pop culture references, but this one I think he was trying to infuse something about uh, mega corporations, particularly with e uh, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. It sort of comes out of nowhere. It, it doesn't quite land the way it should, but uh, it's an interesting twist nonetheless. Uh, coffee apocalypse. So in this one, we're talking about how coffee shops seem to be springing up all over town. Uh, people are loving the uh, easy access to coffee. What they don't realize is the coffee shops are being manned by rival aliens. And then when the number of coffee shops gets a little bit too out of hand, the shops come to life into giant coffee mechs, <laughs> which would send out a call across the globe to make every coffee producing machine turn into uh, android combatants who are doing the bidding of, of rival alien species. And then it just sort of ends. Again, it's more of a prelude than an actual story, but it's it's an interesting concept nonetheless. And there's certainly some meta commentary there about the proliferation, or I should say the over-proliferation of uh, coffee shops around town. Uh, Demons. This one is another short that's more like a prologue or a setup than anything else. Uh, a sort of a rough and tumble guy goes into a bar, meets another guy who uh, claims to be drinking his demons away until he finds out that the, uh, the first guy is... Uh, more of a criminal, but the second guy is, is truly infested by demons and that uh, turns into a bad situation for guy number one. Uh, again, it's very brief. Oh, it's almost nothing to it. And it seems like a prologue or a prelude to set up a, a larger story. And it's not particularly funny, but, you know, interesting nonetheless where it could lead to a, an expansion of stories down the line. Uh, the Tomb Down the Street. This is the, probably the most complete and comprehensive story in the batch that reads like a traditional campfire ghost story uh, a kid who's new in town uh, with a single mom they're used to living uh, moving from town to town over the last couple of years just to find work and make ends meet he's left on his own one night because his mom has to work late and when he cuts through the local cemetery just to make it home before it gets dark he meets up with two boys who are nicknamed brothers but they're really cousins and they find out that on the night of the full moon things get a little zombie-rific. And it, it, it sort of turns out into a, a ghost story where these two boys are, are uh, guardian angels, if you want to look at it like that. And at the, in the next morning, when the boy finally lives through his nighttime ordeal, he finds out that uh, the legends of what goes on in that cemetery are more real than he realized. So interesting story. It reads more like a traditional campfire ghost story, and it's uh, actually really well done. Uh, common genius. So a mad scientist wants to prove the existence of the multiverse. And in so doing, he actually winds up succeeding. But, you know, the, the theory be of a multiverse is if there's one of you, there's probably multiple versions of you. And he finds out very quickly that the uh, opening door to the multiverse uh, may be opening the door for every version of himself. And there are more of him than he realizes. So again, kind of an exploration of a concept about what happens when there's more than one of you all trying to do the same thing at the same time and creating a bit of a mess, but it's an okay uh, premise. Not really comedic, except for the cartoonish nature of the art, um, but you could do worse. Uh, let's see, the last, or the second to last one is the first and last meeting of the Dark Arts Club. This one is more of like a cute kid setup skit where uh, a small group of girls get together to try their hand at Wicca and summoning uh, supernatural spirits. The, the leader, unfortunately, uh, her name is uh, Amelia, yep, gets a hold of a book that tries to summon one of the Lovecraft-like versions of the Elder Gods. And she winds up succeeding. Unfortunately, the Elder God it truly is Elder and maybe not as inclined to uh, destroy the, the face of the Earth and all of humanity like she thought. So that was kind of a cute twist on uh, leaning into Lovecraft, and it's a, it's a cute little story. Last but not least, Bad Dog. So a boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, Betsy and Randy, go to the pound to adopt a dog that will safeguard Betsy while Randy's out working late at night. Uh, and they find, they, they do truly do find a dog that's going to be mean and tough enough to keep Betsy protected while he's away. Unfortunately, the bad dog is badder than they thought, 
and it turns out that uh, he only is only, only he's only particularly good during the full moon. And you can get where that hint is going right away. Uh, and then it turns into kind of a cute twist uh, where it turns into a love story. So that one's kind of got a nice little twist to it. And it's more like a, a like a quick comic strip joke than anything else. I think it generally speaking works. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. All right. So if it, if it doesn't sound like we're too enthusiastic about it because they are very short. So there isn't a lot to absorb. Uh, so you're trying to get it. You're getting the stories in quick hits. But I, I think all of them have some level of an entertainment or amusement and, and play sort of different variations on themes as far as some of them talk about pop culture, reference pop culture and satire in a horror setting. Other than other of these stories are um, more of the traditional type of uh, ghost story and others are more like comic strip, funny book type of stories. And so you get a little bit of everything. All of them are very short, even though this is a, an oversized anthology, there's 10 of them. So really none of the stories take up more than four or five pages. So it's very quick hit, but if you want to kind of like just get a little taste of different art styles with different themes, this one is going to work for you. So generally speaking, what do we like about Laser Brain Halloween Special from Laser Brain Comics? Uh, I think it's okay. I mean, you can give this to a kid. It's it's got all the the spook. It's got the fun type of spookiness that you like to see at Halloween, uh, but it's not gory. It's not gross. It's not um, overly dramatic. It's definitely there's no not safe for work elements in this one. Um, but you, you're, you're going to enjoy it if you're just looking for something kind of fun, spooky, in the same vein as, say, a Charlie, it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, but a little bit more mature. Uh, what didn't we like about it? Yeah, some of the stories feel incomplete. They feel like setups and preludes, but you don't get a full story. It probably would have been worked, served this anthology better if instead of doing 10 really quick hits, maybe we'll let it down to five or six longer stories that felt more complete. The tune down the street is with uh, between Ryan Higgins and Jeff Lorenz has probably felt the more complete and felt the most like a full story that you could get into and get behind and, and really take something away from. So that was definitely solid. So it's a little bit too much uh, quick hit and not enough meat in each one of them. I think just uh, pull, paring down the list to a few of the few stories that were expanded more and had more meat to them individually would have served the story better. So final thoughts, what do we think about Laser Brain Comics Halloween Special from Laser Brain Comics? Fun, cute, spooky, in a, in a kid-friendly, entertaining kind of way. And if that's what you're looking for, for a Halloween-themed comic, you're in great shape. On the on the downside, there, there are the, some of the stories are a little bit too quick hit, a little bit too underdeveloped. I would have liked if maybe the list was pared down and expanded the stories more to give more meat or made the anthology longer and, and flesh them out a little bit more. So you get this, get some good with the bad. None of them are terrible, but some of them just feel a little short, um, short changed, which is mm -mm, sometimes that happens in anthologies. So you got to take the good with the bad. Therefore, we're going to give Laser Brain Halloween special from Laser Brain Comics. I would say let's do a seven out of 10. So thank you for much. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please stay tuned through the outro for our next video.